that people have never seen with Ike. Like, he gets the space scene with Mare, right? And then you're following into every single one of the sword moves. <laughs> but when you got a character who, by design, has every projectile that you wish you had, a projectile that cover jumps, a projectile to cover certain rain, pretty much in the form of yeah. the rank, and then literally an arc fire to hold you in place, you got, you got some stuff going on for you, man. Yeah. This character has the, one of the best, one of the worst recoveries in the game, but I mean, in terms of the toolkit, on paper, it's one of the best out Yeah, I mean, and we've been seeing some toolkits for Innovative. You know, if you watch Frostbite this weekend, uh, mm -hmm. shoot on 3 million IQ down air, but, you know, they're, they're, this character's got some stuff. Yeah, definitely Shulk, you know, also uh, in contention, honestly, for the top, top five best characters in the game. Depends on who you ask. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy when you think about it. Like, there's so many characters that we have that we can definitely... There's like 15 top five characters, yeah. man. All right, one thing about Nico though is he does, he has played Ricker before, so he's kind of familiar with the character toolkit, so he's, as you can see, Nico is pretty good at adapting how, how he's going to be playing. I, I, right there, Nico tried to drop down an edge guard with the upbeat, but great rip recovery uh, to the ledge to sneak down by Bayern. I do like how Nico's trying to jump over each and every time out. That way he gets into the zone with the sword move hole and axe. And then so much far from the clutch there, he's going to look for a follow, but he's not able to find anything. And then they are into the back there. They're going to get grabbed back, so Dome actually with a big man to beat right now. Over here, yeah, I'm telling you, man. But by design, this character toolkit is literally like, see, I'm telling you, the axe has a good enough option to cover the jump, so you can actually like have three ways to uh, have axe: close range, mean regular range, and then far range. And even like, you know, how do you approach Victor under that platform? But I guess once you get him out of the platform, onto the ledge, he's gone. But answering right back with that down angle back here, see, it's two stocks of peace now. Yeah. One thing that Ricker does, actually with all the mammals, and it's even like it's even a thing in their games, but they actually suffer when they're in close range. That's kind of what we see with Nico, right? Yeah. Bring it to the close range, hit him with my aerials, and then bring him to the left and hit my face. Yeah, most of the time we're seeing Nico rocking in either the speed art or the jump art, just able to you know, move, maneuver around Richter's projectile. Uh, yeah. One thing that is also important to know for TP Jumbo is he, if you see Nico go for all these aerials, he wants to play a little bit of anti air game too. Yeah. Yeah, Richter's up to, you know, great move, great to get box of others. Able to, you know, anti air the axe gonna be a, you know, real annoying option to jump in on. Oh, I didn't even see the warning. It's a tether there that there's no much able to use. Like it, he's looking for the follow coming up there, but he misses the opportunity. Nico takes it back, putting the end of our face into you know, that forward air, reading the air dodge. Yeah, great stuff there from Nico. He's gonna pull ahead in this game one now. This the air goes for the forward throw afterwards and catches the tech in the spot dog. He is in T3 Dome's head right now, 35%. Man, you're talking about being in someone's head, man, being in the zone. That's, that's pretty much being in the head, man. When you're literally inside the body, you know there's every move. Yeah, I'm just gonna switch into jump art, gonna jump out of it, not wanting to deal with Victor's down air setup. <laughs> It's that Richard Aaron, Nico looking for the air card phase yet again. It's in his hands, but don't able to recover with a wall get up. That's one thing that surprised Nico didn't actually cover with the option. Usually he's pretty keen to cover all options on the ledge, but that's not the situation here. Kind of gives Dumb the opportunity. Great use of the shield right right there. Gets it tight right as he gets hit, so he goes up, but doesn't really go anywhere. He's able to air dodge onto the zip. Oh. That forward air and smash up. He's gone. There's nowhere for him to go, and I take it back to whip recovery. Coming in clutch. Yeah, I do. That whip recovery is pretty clutch. It's, it's range is pretty something to be seen. It's very similar to a tether, yeah. except you're using aerials instead of a speed to grab. Okay, it's an angle back, and that's one of the things all the dumb ones have, right? They're able to angle the whip and the aerial yeah, all eight directions. I like it. Nico kind of changing his recovery. Usually we usually see him go for the um, backslash, right? So he lands in the box and really always active. But he's kind of saving that one, gets the forward throw, and catches T3 Dumb yeah. for that forward air. Yeah, bit of an aggressive option right there. When you're flashing that press against the wall, though, I'm not sure what he could have done. If Nico, you know, reacted to any of his get ups, he was dead. Yeah, and it's kind of one of those things where, like I said, like, Nico kind of gave him the benefit of the doubt. Like, he didn't get the roll get up at all. Yeah. That's usually like, kind of a characteristic of him. That's usually what he gets, right? He's covering all the angles. But that situation like that, <laughs> T3 Dumb, that's why he went for that forward He's like, hey, I'm, he might actually read my wall at this time, so I actually want to hit him. But that's also an option yeah. that a lot of players aren't really familiar with. Because when, when the bum ones are at the ledge, they can actually just get, up, get off the edge and then have a pretty significant forward air yeah, with, exactly. with, with, a, with a decent range and actually able to like get enemies away from you. 
from that spacing too, especially when you find the spacing at the ledge. I feel like that was kind of just the I'm gonna go for the least expected option. You know? Yeah. I, mm -hmm. With my back this far against the wall, it wouldn't be smart for me to go for the forward air from ledge. So that's what I'm gonna do because that's the one he's not gonna. Do yeah, and like he saw the roll get up, so he might not see this forward air from the yeah. Kind of like understand like, hey, if you didn't get this option, he may not come for this other one. But unfortunately, he goes looking for everything. I think he don't have. Yeah, now onto this game two on Battlefield. Strong start here from Nico, 72 to 20, or 62 to 25. All right, so far TV don't able to use the recovery. Get on the platform, surprise Nico, not go for the upset with a great end here. Nonetheless, man, he's pretty much caught TP freedom anywhere else but the stage. Yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised to see this kind of pick from TP down. I feel like this does benefit Nico a lot. His you know, Nair and forward air hitbox is just basically covering the entire platform there. Every time TP Dunk gets hit up onto it, he has nowhere to really go. Exactly. Hit again. Exactly. Like even even if like this is even if this is Nico's favorite as a pick, it's still pretty tough for TP Dunk overall. But I kind of understand the case. You want to have a smaller stage, right? A little bit more. Like if you do happen to get the arc, I'm sorry, if you able to actually get the uh, holy water into the park. Yeah, but all I'm seeing here is Nico get all these options and TP Dome stuck in the position where he doesn't want to be and yep. going for two rolls. Yeah, Nico really just on top of Dome, not letting him go anywhere so in this game. Yeah, he's kind of playing the oppressive game. Like, he, like I said, he's used this character before. He saw it over at the G Sport Arena tournament this past two weekends ago. Forward air, double forward air, has him off stage, goes for another one, but Tether recovers from Richter's just gonna immediately get him onto the ledge. He gets the up smash and he gets the stop. Yo, man, talk about unorthodox options as you mentioned earlier. Like, you did not see that up smash actually going for it. Yeah, and that's actually the second one Dome's caught Nico with now. Nico, a lot of these times, he stopped the jump over Richter, not respecting the giant hitbox of his down, or his up smash. <laughs> and the cross and the return to center, but he tries to go for that E3 uh, uh, DP option there. And he just runs up the middle pop there. Smash right out here. Back here, gonna force him off. He goes out there, edge guard him. Unfortunately, he went just a little bit too far forward, so he wasn't able to get the air slash as an edge guard. He had to turn it off so he could get this to the ledge. But he's still just keeping Victor stuck on the ledge. He goes for the forward smash. That's a mess. Oh, yeah, he went for the neutral air. I kind of would have understood if he went for the forward air like he did last time. Even though we saw how the situation played out, it would have been much better than going for the neutral air. Or trying to grab the ledge yet again. But as a type situation, man, you kind of force yourself to mini like go ledge. And he the used shield the shield, shield bar in the middle of the gun. That was real great stuff there from Liko. And not going to die to the up E right there from Victor. Okay, well, he's got that extra jump height with the jump bar activated. Or it's so able to go so fast, man. It's fast, it's kind of slow on the startup, but on the return, it's really fast. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Okay, he's kind of off the stage here. The ledge shop option, I like the fact that Dome went for the neutral right here. He's got Nico kind of spaced out. He's looking for the opportunity to take this down 186. Nico just refusing to die here 201%. Now. Yeah, he had pretty much activated the Golden Monado, but it go. runs out. Yeah, it only lasts for so long there, not long enough. Apparently, he does lose the stock, but he's looking to take this from the TP Dome right now. He took him across the stage, man. Send this boy for a ride. Can't come to my town and start telling me how to dominate. Dome gets the grab here. Edge guard fades into his hands. It'll be curtain for Nico. He falls to many of the Belmont moves, and that neutral into the angle forward air. Up close. Smash up again. Tries to be up here. Goes for the forward air. He has him off the stage. Not able to really use this air slash edge guard that we're used to seeing from Nico. Tether recoveries from Dome have really come in clutch. Yeah, but that's one thing that Nico's starting to cover, right? Like, it was so clutch earlier ago, but now that Nico's kind of adapted to it. Like, you see him go for the down throws. Yeah. We see him now going for the anti here on the platform because he knows, like, hey, man, Dome's getting a little away with too much. So he start covering those options to force him at the edge guard phase. All right, interesting up there from, up there, there from Nico. Not able to actually get a uh, hit onto Dome with this uh, smash guard. Now actually in the disadvantage here against Dome. And finally, man, the percents pretty much fell in Nico's favor. Fly at that one opportunity, Dome loses himself.